Hello everyone, my name is Michaela Tiranis and I am the Special Collections Librarian at Knox College. During today's tour, I will be introducing the Knox College archives as well as highlighting Knox alumnus and early international student Teruo Okada from Japan and his college scrapbook found in the student papers. Before we dig deeper into Okada's collection, I wanted to give a brief introduction to the college and its archives. Knox College is a private liberal arts college located in rural Galesburg, Illinois. Uniquely, the college and the city of Galesburg were founded at the same time by the same individuals. In 1837, George Washington Gale and a group of Presbyterians and Congregationalists from New York founded the institution as a manual labor college in which academics coexisted with agricultural and mechanical work. Because of this close connection between the city and the college, there is a lot of overlap and interweaving within the collections. The College Archives is one of the five core collections in Special Collections, which additionally include the manuscripts, rare books, local history series, and the art collections. Farther within the College Archives, we also maintain the archival collections of Lombard College, our sister school, which did not survive the Great Depression and closed in 1929. The College Archives is also organized at a series level with various categories dedicated to students, faculty, and staff activities. While stored in the library and a storage location in our Center for Fine Arts, the collections span roughly 1,200 linear feet. So next we'll take a look at some of our spaces and special collections. This is our reading room, which was created around the late 1980s to serve as the main reference area for the department. The space is really, I think, a warm and inviting space for individual patrons in small groups, but it does tend to be a bit small for larger classes. Fortunately, we do have these two separate rooms located on the same floor that facilitate larger classes. Although the last in-person class I assisted with was in the largest room, the red carpet room, with six students during the fall term. And it was great at the time because it allowed each student to have their own table and to socially distance from each other. Most of our classes are virtual for now, but I am definitely looking forward to the department being able to utilize these beautiful rooms soon. Next, this is our processing area and stack floor located on the second floor of Special Collections, where you can slightly see in this picture some of our smaller archival collections in the back. We also have the large table there in the center of the room, which is extremely helpful with processing and student worker activities. Though it's difficult to see in this photo, the archival collections on this floor are also stored with the manuscript collections, local history reference sources, and the rare book collections. Lastly, here is where a majority of the larger and unprocessed collections live, which is in the remote storage area in the Center for Fine Arts building. These collections also reside with our art collections, which Special Collections partially stewards. So for the rest of this tour, we will be looking at arguably one of the most unique collections at Knox, the Teruo Okada Papers. In the archives, we don't really have another collection quite like this, at least to its depth, and that highlights pre-World War II international student life. The collection itself includes 10 scrapbooks, nine of which include World War II news clippings from European magazines. After Knox, Okada joined the Japanese military, and so it makes sense that he would have these scrapbooks, although we are unsure if he was the creator of them or if they were possibly given to him later on. So the image on the left-hand side of the screen does show an example of these World War II scrapbooks. In contrast, the scrapbook on the right was certainly created by Okada and showcases a very different story in comparison to the World War II scrapbooks. This scrapbook highlights some of the most memorable and happier moments of his student life at Knox before the major life-changing events of World War II. As far as instruction and engagement this past year, reproductions of the scrapbook were used in virtual and hybrid courses in sociology, anthropology, and history. Students typically participated in a primary source analysis of a portion of the scrapbook during these classes and discussed major findings and questions as a group at the end of the session. These discussions highlighted some major questions that I also introduced as part of an alumni event later in the academic year. Fortunately, the audience included past alumni, including those that knew Okada personally, Okada's family members such as his son and niece, and the rest of the Knox campus community was also invited. Together, these discussions facilitated a much broader understanding of Okada and his life at Knox. In classes and outreach events, the scrapbook also served as an excellent example of the importance of studying the physical organization of an item, in addition to its content and context. For instance, 
I realized much later that I was observing the scrapbook backwards in comparison to how Okada, the creator, had organized it. As excitedly explained by his niece, oh, that's because in Japan, books are organized right to left. Once the organization of the scrapbook is found, an examiner will quickly realize that Okada was extremely detailed and organized, as the scrapbook recalls almost an exact timeline of Okada's Knox experience. So these are the few details that I try to pass along to students and others before engaging with the scrapbook, just so there's a good foundation before observing it. Okada was the first student to enroll at Knox as the Bancroft Scholar in 1929, which was a scholarship offered to a Japanese student to study at any U.S. university or college, and we'll talk a little bit more about this soon. Additionally, Okada founded the Tokyo Knox Club with three additional members in 1938. After World War II, he continued with this club, and one of his major goals was to improve the relationship between the United States and Japan after the incredibly difficult years of international conflict. Next, I'll point to some of the main observations and questions that students, faculty, alumni, and Okada's family engaged with. One of the main questions that we explored often in classes and through outreach events was, what brought Okada to Knox, especially at a very small liberal arts college in central Illinois? And as just noted, Okada's extremely organized scrapbook answered this question at the very beginning. The first pages of the scrapbook include correspondence and images regarding the Bancroft Scholarship. The scholarship honored Edward Bancroft, another Knox alumnus and trustee, who served as a U.S. ambassador to Japan in 1924. Unfortunately, he only served in this position for a year, but upon his death, his family wanted to start a scholarship that would allow Japanese students to attend colleges and universities in the United States. So on the left is one of maybe 15 documents in English and Japanese that describe the scholarship and Okada's acceptance to Knox. This specific letter is from Okada's high school principal inquiring as to if Okada will be accepted, since typically at this time, he, did, he wouldn't meet all of the qualifications. At this time, international students had to know at least two European languages at Knox, but they accepted Okada's Japanese and Chinese language as sufficient enough. Based on correspondence and several images of Bancroft, Okada decided on attending Knox due to Bancroft's close connections with the college. Next, the scrapbook outlines Okada's journey from Japan to Seattle to Chicago, and then finally to Galesburg. In the Seattle section, it was really interesting because there was a series of ephemeral contents in the section highlighting this large building pictured here in Seattle. It wasn't until later that students and myself found correspondence that detailed that this was Okada's first time seeing large buildings in skyscrapers. In another letter, he described how odd it was to see so many green lawns and trees in Galesburg. Though minimal, this type of correspondence and content gave students an idea of Okada's first reaction to the United States. So here are some of the first images we see of Okada at Knox in 1929. And in past classes, students have really enjoyed seeing these images and guessing where Okada was in these photographs, especially since some of them were taken in front of very recognizable buildings on campus. For example, the one on the lower left is the staff door of the library, which I can easily point out because I walk out of that door every afternoon. This practice does help to facilitate in a way a sense of empathy for the students because many of them have been in these same places and in these same shoes. They envisioned being new to campus once again and exploring the buildings and campus just like Okada did. In addition to the campus photographs, Okada also intermingled images of his family and friends with the early parts of the scrapbook. Together, there's an estimated 20 to 30 images and they capture some really beautiful scenes of life in Japan, including the ones pictured here. When students saw these images in particular, we discussed the potential homesickness Okada might have had at this time and how he might have coped with it. One way we do believe he was able to cope with it is through correspondence with his family. For example, the scrapbook also includes loose postcards from Okada to his family in Japan. In these postcards, he gives his parents basically a visual tour of Knox College and the downtown Galesburg area by describing the places and locations pictured on the front of the card. One of the funniest cards that I saw was his description of the women's dormitory, which he made sure to let his parents know that he never goes there, but he just knows where it's at. These were fortunately transcribed by former professor Mickey Hani, and we are hoping to have additional transcriptions in the future. Towards the middle of the scrapbook, we start to see Okada pictured in various images with friends he met at Knox. 
From these images and additional ephemeral materials, the students observed that Okada was very social and a busy individual. After viewing this name card pictured here, uh, students in particular with the anthropology class were interested in if Okada experienced any forms of segregation or racism from the campus or Galesburg community. And from our observations, there was evidence um, of Okada, like many historically marginalized students at the time, joining organizations and activities that they were allowed to participate in. At this time, Knox sororities and fraternities, for example, would have had policies regarding non-white students joining their organizations. The evidence that we found does come from the common club, which Okada was in. And we saw this club frequently mentioned towards the middle of the scrapbook via images, news clippings, and other ephemeral items, including these images, where the group won a homecoming contest for best float. Um, and for that float, they were actually honoring Edward Bancroft. And in addition, we weren't sure we knew much information about the common club at this time beyond the content in the scrapbook. So we did look into the research a little bit and saw the club's purpose and how long it existed at Knox. We learned that Common Club was a short-lived group at Knox and at many other colleges and universities. We found out that it was a social group. So the group at Knox had a fund that was created by the group and then used to fund theater tickets, dances, dinners, and trips to nearby cities and destinations. In contrast to sororities and fraternities, there was no selection or invitation process. Anyone could join the group, including Okada. So Okada's main access to socialization at Knox was through this group, and it is evident within the scrapbook um, through various different pages of tickets, dance cards, and images of operas and shows. As far as next steps, uh, there are hopes and priority tasks for the future. We fortunately had two requests to help with transcriptions, which is a huge benefit because about one fourth of the scrapbook does include Japanese correspondence and notes. We would also like to make this a priority digitization project. It's been great having the scrapbook involved in classes and outreach activities, but I think making it even more accessible and sustaining the physical scrapbook as well will be a huge benefit. As I saw in the outreach event in particular, the scrapbook had a wide range of interests. And so I'm excited to have it be continued to use over the years via additional instruction activities and independent projects. So I want to say thank you for viewing this tour today. I'd be happy to take any questions or comments via my email at mtaranas at Thank you.